tonight, the MFS begins its next recruitment drive and Port Augusta's men's shed celebrates two decades. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with Louise Hedger begins now. Good evening. Whaler businesses could be some of the first in regional South Australia to reap the rewards of faster internet access with a deal struck between the local council and state government. The $1 million project is set to provide high-speed internet and has already been labelled a game-changer. World-leading internet will soon be available in Whaler and Mount Gambier. Whaler is one of the first regional cities that will have gigabit service and this will provide the ability for our businesses to transform how they operate. Wala will be connected to the Gig City network by Adelaide company MIMP Connecting Solutions, going live around November this year. The broadband speeds are one gigabyte per second. Uh, it's fantastic for startups and growth focused businesses. This technology, this speed, will enable them to transform how they run the technological side of their business. Acting President of the Chamber of Commerce says that this will also benefit the community. Opportunities for e-tourism like um, you know, e-sports competitions, streaming concerts in, in real time, stuff that we, we can't even think of yet, it's very exciting. Minister Pasoni says that new skills will be built through the initiative. A lot more opportunities for regional South Australians to actually uh, develop their craft and build their skills and build their businesses from regional South Australia and a step forward for smaller local businesses. Enter areas that they hadn't originally thought of, whether it's enhancing their online presence, whether it's dealing globally, whether it's offering a service which is, is data heavy. Today's announcement is just for local businesses, with talks of also rolling out this deal for residents. This is world-class infrastructure. Um, you know, potentially there's no reason why Wyla couldn't become a regional Silicon Valley. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Metropolitan Fire Service is ramping up its recruitment campaign with applications to become a firefighter opening today. A push for a more gender and culturally diverse workforce is at the forefront of this campaign within the Spencer Gulf. From burning buildings to roadside incidents, the life of a firefighter is intense and challenging. But the Metropolitan Fire Service says the stigmas surrounding the high intensity job may be deterring those who think they won't fit the mould. The climate we're in now, we have uh, a very diverse culture and, uh, and we do encourage these people to apply. The Spencer Golf looking to diversify its ranks, launching a new campaign called Challenge Your Potential. Uh, there's a requirement for firefighters to be more than just people that can lift heavy things. There's also other elements like compassion and empathy. The organisation has seen a 35% increase in female firefighters since announcing a push for greater diversity three and a half years ago. Now there's 20 full-time female firefighters across the state, but the MFS wants the number to be significantly higher. When I got in, um, there was four girls in my squad and we doubled the numbers. In recent years, 2,200 people have applied to join the organisation, many not making the cut. Dave Collier did get through and is urging everyone of all backgrounds to apply and join the service. I'm not Australian, I came from Scotland and I suppose that's what I did in 1983. I challenge my potential. Today marking the opening of this year's recruitment drive. I want to serve your community to have a very, very rewarding career, uh, to work in a, an area with great mateship. For more information, visit the MFS website. Dominic Beaton, 7 Spencer Golf News. A Broken Hill man has lost his licence after he was clocked travelling at 197 kilometres an hour near Jamestown last Friday. Police allege the 47-year-old already had a 24-hour ban for testing positive to amphetamine and driving without a licence from earlier that day. Allegedly, he was caught again travelling at 149 kilometres in a 110 zone on the Augusta Highway just 20 minutes later. He's been charged for speeding, disobeying a driver direction, driving unlicensed and drug driving. His car has been impounded for 28 days. 
Police have revealed nine drivers tested positive to drugs during a road safety operation near Port Augusta last week. Operation Air Safe was held last Thursday at Lincoln Gap with over 1,200 drivers tested. No one was caught drink driving but seven people were found in possession of cannabis. Defect notices were also issued to over 60 vehicles including a B-double truck with no effective brakes on either trailer. Police expect to hold many more operations over the next 12 months. The Port Augusta Men's Shed has opened up the workshop to celebrate the organisation's 20th birthday. Organisers say the creative outlet has supported men through tough times and in some cases has even saved lives. Putting the polish on one of his treasured projects, but for Brian McGovern, the men's shed is about much more than the finished product. I was having a few problems and I knew I had to get something to keep me occupied and fill my life in. The Vietnam veteran first walked into the workshop 20 years ago and quickly found a connection alongside other returned servicemen. Having a place like this where you can come down where there's other vets and you know you've all got a thing in common, that just makes it that much better. Brian is just one of 29 Men's Shed members who today celebrated its 20th birthday. Handymen pick up their tools three times a week, repurposing recycled wood into a variety of designs. We build rocking horses, we repair old people's furniture like uh, drawers and cupboards. As the oldest member, 92-year-old Earl Yeager even schedules medical appointments around his time working in the shed. I'll be doing this until the day I die. Yeah, it's, I will be. <laughs> I think it saved my life, really, because I was really depressed, uh, looking for somewhat, something to do. The men looking forward to the next 20 years and would like to see even more builders in the workshop. You come here for socialisation, um, mateship. I'd say the best part of my life so far. To find your local centre, visit the Australian Men's Shed Association website. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, the opportunity to try your hand at owning an Outback pub and preparations underway for this weekend's Wharf Fest. Welcome back. If you've ever wanted to buy a pub now could be one of the best times to get in the business. An historic Broken Hill establishment is up for sale with a price well below the market average. It's a sentence many of us will say once in our lives. We should buy a bar. Of course we should buy a bar. We should totally buy a bar. Totally buy a bar. Our bar would be awesome. The Alma Hotel was established in 1891 and for over a century was one of the busiest watering holes in the city south. But now what was once a humble tap room and restaurant is now a desolate building with a 130 year legacy. It is an icon of the South Broken Hill and it, just, it's, it is a shame that it, it is now closed. Um, but, Pat, the opportunity is still here to reopen it. The pub, which includes a large bar area, a dining room and tab facilities, has gone up for auction twice, but the right price and right buyer is yet to be found. The owner wanting to sell to fund other investments in the area, and the real estate agent says the buyer needs to have three attributes. That the number one priority, you've got to be a people person. Number two, you've got to be a hard worker. And three, you've got to work the business yourself. There has been a number of offers made for the hotel, but none have led to a handshake. If you're thinking of becoming a Broken Hill publican, the establishment is up for grabs at $200,000. It's, it's a large premises. You, you can't buy a pub in New South Wales for $200,000, and it comes with the licence. He is hoping it's not last call yet for this iconic pub. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The rides, food and entertainment for Port Augusta's Wharf Fest will soon be on site ahead of the annual community event this weekend. Despite the closure of some sections of the wharf, organisers say there will be no major changes. The dizzying highs for thrill seekers, carnival food for all ages and plenty of novelties to spend hard-earned pocket money. Wharf Fest is fast approaching. It's an opportunity to celebrate Port Augusta but give something back to our community in a big way. The colourful annual event is preparing for another year, with all the fan favourites returning to the edge of the Gulf. We've got back our old McDonald's travelling farms, 
Um, we've got Tony from Call for the Kids, but we have some new activities this year. Run by volunteers of the Apex Group, profits will filter back into its community programs. Despite the closure of damaged sections of the wharf, organisers say the carnival atmosphere won't be scaled back. It runs from the Joy Baluk Bridge right through to the helicopters down at the Yacht Club. Um, nothing will change from our point of view. The council expects the event to attract more than just local festival goers. It's basically a tradition over many years and it brings people into our city and those that are passing through will stay hopefully and spend a bit of time once they see the activity. Last year, high-powered winds blew the top off a number of stalls, but organisers have fingers crossed for calmer weather this year. Get along, enjoy the day, it should be great weather, uh, if not, rug up. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. A men's support group in Wyala is set to receive funding from the Young Tradespeople and Professionals Annual Charity Ball. The organisation is asking for items which can be auctioned or raffled on the night to raise money for mental health organisation in it. Money will also be raised through ticket sales and business sponsorships. The event will be held on August 10th and information can be found online. Broken Hill horse riders have this weekend been developing their skills during a clinic at the local pony club. Riders from as young as six years old through to adults were right in the saddle learning about horsemanship. They focused on different levels of riding, handling and training their mounts. Some of the younger kids keen to show off their skills. The local pony club hopes to host another session in the coming months. The next generation of cattle and sheep farmers have taken part in an education day at the Jamestown Showgrounds in preparation for the Royal Adelaide Show. 142 students, including many from the Mid-North, gearing up for the popular event. Trying their hand at caring for cattle and sheep. These Mid-North students busy polishing off their agricultural skills in preparation for a busy show season. Cattle preparation for showing it country shows as well as the Royal Adelaide show, as well as sheep preparation. The Jamestown Showgrounds providing a practical experience for eager young farmhands. Students gaining an understanding of grooming, nutrition, judging and handling. It is more an opportunity in my mind for the kids to get an experience that I, as their teacher, don't always have the resources to give them. To judge your own sheep and you want your flock to be as best as you can be. Daniel Firm wanting to give something back to the next generation of the cattle and sheep industry. It follows in the wake of biosecurity law changes, which restricted school cattle from attending country shows prior to the Royal Adelaide show in September. And we find that the confidence that the children build out of having quiet animals and stuff that just follow them around is really passing down the line when they're getting to that late show with their school steers. He says the Education Day is helping give students confidence in networking and building up their show experience. We're starting to see more and more of these faces that I see here uh, at these Education Days and all of a sudden they're popping up everywhere in the industry which is really good. Dominic Beaton, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We'll have the wrap of the weekend football and we'll have the weather details with Chris. Hello again to local footy now and despite starting slow, the South Broken Hill Football Club cruised to an easy win over Central at the weekend. Here's Patrick Reinke with this week's footy wrap. The reigning premiers were slow out of the blocks in Saturday's game against Central but still managed to record a convincing win by full time. The Magpies started strong, snagging the first goal to take an early lead. From there, South hit back but could not find the goal, scoring five behinds for the quarter. The Pies putting immense pressure on the home side. Central got another goal before the first break. Unfortunately, they couldn't replicate their efforts in the next quarter, with South firing on all cylinders. It took just 20 seconds before a goal was scored in the second, as the Roos dominated in the centre. Mark Purcell was in fine form, while Cody Sean bagged six goals for the day. The red and white leading by 31 at half time. To their credit, the Magpies didn't give in and held South to a 78 point margin. The best game the black and white has played for 2019. Matt Sullivan was best on ground for the Pies, putting in great defensive efforts like this one across the match. Ryan Curtis and Lockie Jenkin were also good in patches. In the other game, tempers boiled over between North and West in a fiery clash at Jubilee Oval. 
Brock Ellis and Luke Jones will likely miss games following this Donnybrook in the third term. The Bulldogs slotted two crucial last quarter goals to upset the Robins and win by 25 points. Jaden Kelly and Jed Watson starred for the Blue and White. Congratulations to North's Brett Johnson on playing 350 games. Over in Wyala and the result was the opposite. West defeated North. The Dragons finished the game strongly to win by just under three goals. The game was a very tight affair with the margin only growing by a point at each change. Matthew Holmes bagged three for West. Daniel Collison got three for North. In the end, the latter leaders just had a bit more run in the legs. In the other games, Weeruna Bay got over Rupina and Central had ten goal scorers in their 167 point drubbing of South. Moving to the Spencer Golf League, Solomon Town closed the gap on second spot with a win over South Augusta. West defeated Port by 13 and Prop Risden thumped Central. In Port Lincoln, way back upset ladder leaders Tasman in a 15-point thriller. Seven points separated Lincoln South and Boston and eight points was the margin between Mallee Park and Marble Range. Some great games over the weekend. In the northern areas, it was wins to Boolaroo, Southern Flinders and Broughton Mandura. In the Great Flinders, Ramblers, United Yelana and and Tumby Bay all got wins. Finishing with a look at York Peninsula, Moonta beat Ardrossan, Southern Eagles bested Central York, while Crows got over Butte and Pascoville edged out Wallaroo. I'll be back tomorrow night to wrap up the other sports from around the regions. Now for a look at this week's weather, here's Britt. Thanks Lou and good evening. It's been a mostly fine day with showers over some parts. Port Augusta reached a top of 17, as did Broken Hill. Port Piri and Adelaide both 16, 15 the top at Port Lincoln and Wyala. Looking to the clouds now, where the high pressure system south of WA moved into the bite today, and it will remain stationary there into tomorrow. Sticking with tomorrow on the water, southeasterly winds at 10 to 15 knots with swells at 1.5 metres. And the sun will rise at quarter past 7 tomorrow morning. Fine and partly cloudy conditions expected across the region, apart from possible showers at Port Lincoln and Coffin Bay. Port Augusta, Woodna and Port Pirie all expecting tops of 17. Wyala 16, 15 the lucky number for Port Lincoln, Corn, Broken Hill, Cleve, Kadena and Adelaide. Coffin Bay 14, Clare 12. Looking further ahead now with showers at Port Lincoln Wednesday and Thursday, remaining fine on Friday. Cleve looking mostly fine in the coming days apart from a possible shower on Thursday. Woodnut remaining fine and partly cloudy through the week. Wyala and Port Augusta both looking fairly consistent, fine and partly cloudy with maximums in the mid-teens. Kadena with a little more cloud cover on Thursday. Port Pirie remaining fine through the week, Clare with morning frost Thursday and Friday, and finally Broken Hill looking fine and partly cloudy through till Friday. And that brings us to the end of today's weather segment. Louise, it's back to you. Lovely, thank you for that, Britt. And that's your local news this Monday evening. Thanks for joining us today. We'll have updates later, but until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.